I ain't breaking bread with witches. You hear me? In Jesus' name, I'll call the spirit forth that's inside you and we'll expose you for who you are right up here in these cedar chips up in this house. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 modern day book burning incidents. Rushdie embarked on a life of high security and was often in hiding. He survived the fatwa, others did not. For this list, we're looking at incidents from 1980 on of people that decided to censure books by setting them on fire or destroying them for one reason or another. Have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? Let us know below. Number 10, Jewish and transgressive literature. Over the last few years, Hungary has become more extreme with its politics. The most visible symbol of nationalist Hungary? This new electrified fence on the country's southern border with Serbia, built to protect what Orban calls Christian Europe from invaders. And that was highlighted during this incident. In November 2013, the far-right group the Magyar Nemzeti Artsvonal, or Hungarian National Frontline, announced their plan to orchestrate, quote, against the forces of darkness and, quote, unethical works. I can boldly say that here and now the radical right is back. They plan to do this by burning the works of Jewish and transgressive authors in multiple locations. Such authors included Imre Kertész, a Jewish survivor of Auschwitz and the winner of the 2002 Nobel Prize in Literature, and Miklos Radnoti, a Jewish poet who was killed in a concentration camp. Dressed in camouflage-patterned uniforms, the group proudly uploaded images of this grim act. Number 9. Dan Flynn's Cop Killer In 1981, during a traffic stop, police officer Daniel Faulkner was fatally shot. Mumia Abu Jamal, who was non-fatally shot at the scene, was arrested for Faulkner slaying. However, the case isn't cut and dried, as many believe Abu Jamal is innocent. Death by any means is wrong, and to kill an innocent man is definitely wrong. There's only one judge, and that's the most high. And there's only one jury, that's the jury of the righteous people. But some also think he's guilty. Well, some call Mumia Abu Jamal an activist, yet he is a convicted cop killer. This week, Philadelphia DA Larry Krasner revealed that he will challenge an order that allowed Abdu Jamal to appeal his case. In 1999, Dan Flynn published the booklet titled Cop Killer, how Mumia Abu Jamal conned millions into believing he was framed. As he spoke about their work at the University of California, Berkeley in 2000, a group of protesters interrupted. They called Flynn names like fascist, and one student even mooned the author. According to Flynn, the students took copies of the booklet for sale, went outside, and set them ablaze while holding signs saying fight racist censorship. Number 8. Abu Nawas's Poetry Abu Nawas was an ancient Arabic poet born in the 8th century. He even appeared in folklore tales like 1001 Nights. By 2001, Egypt's Ministry of Culture, led by Farouk Hosni, had a problem with Nawas's work mostly because it contained homosexual comments and references. And Hosni, who had been in the role since 1987, was not keen on it. So much so that he ordered 6,000 volumes of Nawaz's poetry to be burned. Before this, Hosni had already reportedly had three, quote, indecent novels removed from publication and had the editor on the books fired, among other decrees. Hosni's controversial reign would eventually end in the aftermath of the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. He served as culture minister under Hosni Mubarak until the president's ouster in 2011. And just as the country has since undergone a transformation, so has Hosni's work. Number seven. Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Symbols are a language that can help us understand our past. As the saying goes, a picture says a thousand words, but which words? Sometimes when a work of fiction is put together that uses religious elements but changes the story significantly, people can be upset and see the act as blasphemous. Who is she? My dear, that's Mary Magdalene. The prostitute? She was no such thing. Smeared by the church in 591 Anno Domino, poor dear. And once the film The Da Vinci Code came out in cinemas, some Christians were not happy. In the town of Chicano in Italy, some council members decided to seek revenge. They took a copy of Dan Brown's 2003 novel to the town center and set it ablaze. Many people were there, both supporters of the performance and opponents. Those protesting the event yelled many insults at the book burners and threw tomatoes at them. Yeah. 
some small fights even took place. Number six, annual Bible burnings. Pastor Mark Grizzard of the Amazing Grace Baptist Church in North Carolina believes there's only one version of the Bible, the King James edition, for, as Grizzard states, quote, English-speaking people, and that all other variations are, quote, satanic and, quote, perversions. We're burning uh, versions of God's Word, such as the NIV, the NASV, the ECV, the Living Bible. Since 2009, Grizzard and his crew have met up once a year at Halloween to, quote, celebrate and burn the other versions of the Bible and other literature in an event called the Burning Perversions of God's Word. Burning books that are satanic. Some famous evangelicals like Rick Warren and Billy Graham also had their work destroyed. And weirdly, even literature by Mother Teresa. However, the first event got off to a rocky start when protesters and bad weather meant they couldn't make a fire. So they tore the books up instead. Begin to rip and tear. So you can see we're not burning anything. Number five, Anthony Schaefer's Operation Dark Heart. Anthony Schaefer is a former lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve and worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency. But after an investigation by the DIA, Schaefer had his security clearance revoked in 2006 after he made serious allegations about 9-11. Part of the book does deal with intelligence information that Mohammed Atta was identified as a threat to the U.S. before the 9-11 attacks occurred. Now, Atta, of course, was the ringleader of the attacks and piloted one plane. So Schaefer brought in a ghostwriter to develop his memoir called Operation Dark Heart, which would explore his time working in Afghanistan for the DIA. However, once the Department of Defense saw a copy of the manuscript, they had a big problem. Reviewed by the Army and cleared for publication a second time uh, because of Defense Intelligence Agency in in indicating after they lo looked at it that they felt there was quote unquote top secret information in the book. It was filled with state secrets that could damage national security. So they purchased every copy of the 9,500 first prints and destroyed them. Exactly why did they burn the book, Steve? Well, Bill, they say Operation Dark Heart poses a threat to national security. They didn't explain exactly why. The book was then heavily edited for the second edition. Number four, E.L. James's Fifty Shades of Grey. When the book Fifty Shades of Grey came out in print, you couldn't walk through a bookstore without seeing a stand filled with copies. Fifty Shades of Yay! It is a novel, but some couples are taking it more like a how-to manual, and it's selling at the unheard of rate of one book a second. Everyone seemed to be talking about it, from your neighbor, postal worker, the media, and celebrities. And that didn't sit right with some due to the explicit content on the pages. Do you want anything else? Yes. Rope. Cleveland-based radio DJs Chad Zumach and Alan Cox announced they were going to host a burning of the book, at a Panini's restaurant after callers for their show complained about it. Surprisingly, a decent crowd arrived, ready to see some fire on the nearby beach volleyball court. The DJs were surprised there weren't many protesters, but they believe that's because they assumed it was a joke. I, it's not something I bargained for at all. Number three, Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses. It's not every day that releasing a book causes so much controversy that it gets its own Wikipedia page. Strength of feeling about Rushdie's book resulted in death threats to the author almost as soon as Satanic Verses came out. While critics hailed Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses as an ambitious novel about the immigrant experience, it outraged many in the Muslim community, who saw it as blasphemous. The title references a legend about the Prophet Muhammad permitting a prayer to three goddesses before attributing his words to the devil. Iran's Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini issued a fatwa against Rushdie and anyone who worked on the book, ordering their deaths. His novel, The Satanic Verses, inspired Iran's spiritual leader, Ruhollah Khomeini, to issue a fatwa, a death warrant. He declared the book blasphemous. In 1988, in Bolton, England, 7,000 protesters took part in burning a copy of the book. A few months later, in 1989, protesters in the city Bradford did the same. Several attacks have also followed, some fatal, with Rushdie himself still a target. The news that's come out of New York State just uh, within the last hour about the novelist, the author Salman Rushdie, who has been stabbed at an event in New York State. Number two, library burning. With the Bosnian War kicking off, there was a siege in Sarajevo. During this, 
members of the Bosnian Serb army decided to shell the National and University Library of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which had stood there since 1945. Library workers and neighbors risked their lives to rescue the books from the inferno of the Bosnian War. The library reportedly held over 1.5 million volumes. With the building burning, those responsible are said to have shot anyone that tried to rescue the literature. The helpers managed to save a tenth of the books while dodging sniper fire from the hills overlooking Sarajevo. Municipal firefighters struggled to save the building. In 2014, the library was reopened. A similar tale happened in Sri Lanka in 1981. After three Sinhalese police officers were shot, with two perishing, a group of Sinhalese people took out their rage in the city of Jaffna. The group set the public library on fire, destroying 97,000 books. It was reopened to the public in 2003. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series When the film Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone came out, this sparked a rampage among some who felt the magic content was evil. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard! In New Mexico, the Congregation of the Christ Community Church burned Potter books and works by Stephen King, Eminem, and others. Also in 2001, there was a similar incident in Pittsburgh. In 2002, a pastor in Maine wanted to get in on the fiery action. But after failing to get a permit, he resorted to tearing up pages in a hotel. Over the years, there's been numerous burnings and some calls to ban the franchise altogether. St. Edward Catholic School in Nashville is facing backlash after the school's pastor pulled the Harry Potter series from the library. Another beloved book series, Twilight, also joined in with some Potter burning in 2002 in Tennessee by controversial pastor Greg Locke. Your witchcraft has to flee in the name of Jesus. We'll be down at the fire. If you brought some things, we have things out there, we have things by the office, we have a lot of stuff in the back, all right? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.